Hey bio students, this is Mr. Yago here going through section 11.4. Our focus is going to be on factors that affect how plants grow. Um, so, so far we have done a few labs, uh, most notably our first lab where we planted a soybean um, and a Roundup um, soybean as well, which kind of helps with deteriorating the composite or competition with weeds. Um, and now we're going to look at some other factors um, besides that that will affect plant growth. So by the end of this section, I'm hoping that you understand um, what a PGR is, a plant growth regulator, and how they not only affect plant growth, but also their development. Um, we're going to look at a term called auxins and how they are related to the PGR family. Um, we're also going to look at some growth stimulants and some growth inhibitors. And to stimulate growth, it means to help it grow. To inhibit growth means to hurt it from growing or stop it from growing. So hopefully by the end of this section, you have a good understanding of all of those things. All right, so one of the first things that we're going to talk about is the genetics versus environmental factors. So genetics is something that is going to get passed on. We've talked about it already. It's DNA. Um, it's what's found in the plant. It is the blueprint to help it grow. And there are some genetics or genes with, uh, within these plants that provide the primary control for how these plants grow. Um, and over time, um, certain factors have... Um, determined that this is the most prevalent gene um, or, excuse me, you know, plant that has the best genes to survive. And uh, that's kind of a major portion of how plants grow, the survival of the fittest. Uh, the, other, the other side of the coin is environmental factors. Um, and environmental factors would be things such as temperature, night length, nutrition, chemical signals from other plants um, and activities of neighboring signals. Um, night length is a big one. Um, night length is really going to determine how the seasons really change. So um, how we begin um, in spring and definitely how we start losing leaves in fall. Um, temperature will play a role in that as well um, if we have a late spring or an early winter. Um, nutrition, what is found in the soil, um, will, will be an environmental factor that affect growth. Um, this is a big one too, chemical signals from other plants. A great example that I can give you is if you look underneath a pine tree, um, pine needles are extremely acidic. So when those pine needles drop, they create a very acidic environment for that soil. So you rarely see plants grow underneath pine trees. And honestly, if you have a pine tree in your backyard, you're probably not even going to see grass grow underneath it. Um, so it's a that would be a chemical signal that's affecting um, you know an environmental factor that affect how plants will grow. Now there are some plants that are kind of resistant to that, and you could see them um, proliferating underneath the pine tree. Um, activities of neighboring cells. So if one cell starts to uh, um, starts to grow through, you know, maybe photosynthesis, um, that might cause other cells to do that as well. So let's talk about what a PGR is. Um, basically, it's a plant growth regulator. So something that is going to regulate how a plant grows. And PGRs are substances that function similar to how hormones work in humans. So um, as a human would go through the processes of puberty, um, for males a lot of testosterone is released, for females a lot of estrogen is released. And once that's released into the body, um, it causes us to grow and develop. Well, that same process can happen in plants too. And we have basically five major classes of PGRs. And I want you to know that in this image, we have plant growth promoters or stimulators. We also have plant growth inhibitors. Now, botanists is a, is a fancy word for a plant nerd, um, which is a scientist that just studies plants. Um, and they have identified these. And they are their production is under genetic control, but environmental cues play a critical role role. So the production of these plant growths is a genetic control. So actually plants can produce these themselves and we as humans can manufacture these things and then spray them or put them into the plants. So it's, it's kind of interesting how this all works. But um, 
the genetics behind it um, is just as important as the environmental cues that we talked about on the previous slide. Now, they are produced by tissues in the plant. So now what I'm talking about is the fact that some of these plant growth regulators can be naturally occurring in the plant. Um, and, different if, and they can basically cause different effects in different parts of the plant. So they might cause flowers to sprout, um, fruit to grow. It really depends on your plant. It might even cause leaves to fall off or leaves to start going through the processes of photosynthesis. So some of the major changes that it can occur in our metabolic pathways are photosynthesis, um, which is how plants basically make food, and then Calvin cycle, which we uh, talked about a while ago, um, is a process as well in this photosynthesis. So um, major classes, we're going to talk about three promoters and two inhibitors. So, first we're going to talk about auxins, and if you notice on the previous slide, this is a growth stimulator, okay? So it is going, if, if this plant releases it, or if you put it on the plant, it is going to help it grow. Um, naturally, they are produced in the apical meristems, and here I have a plant here, the apical meristem is way up here, so this is actually an area where lots of new growth is occurring, um, and when they are produced there, they move through the plant through the process of active transport, all right, and if we remember, active transport means it takes energy, so if you're going to produce it here, some of it's got to go to the leaves, down the stem, maybe down into the roots, but notice that there's also an apical meristem down here, a lot of plants will grow at the ends, okay, both the top and the bottom of the plant. Now, low levels of auxins can cause elongation of the stems and the roots, which means it'll help it grow. It might even also help fruit be produced if it is a fruit-bearing plant. But check this out. If the levels are too high, you can actually inhibit growth, okay? So um, notice this, you know, here's the apical bud. If you just cut that apical bud off, that plant's not going to elongate. Okay, because like I said, a lot of these are naturally occurring um, regulators. So this would be very similar um, to serotonin. Serotonin is a hormone in your brain. Low levels, you feel super happy. High levels, you can feel really depressed. Besides auxins, we have some other growth stimulants. Um, Gibberellins, which are a very common um, growth stimulator. It was essentially was a fungus that was discovered in rice plants, I believe, by the Chinese way back in the uh, 17, 1800s. And they found that um, these are responsible for stimulating stem elongation. Um, however, it's also involved in reproduction, so helping the plants produce their reproductive parts, um, as well as flower and fruit production. So these gibbelarins can be processed um, naturally within the plant um, and really help the plant grow, stimulate reproduction, and increase, increase flower and fruit production. The last, last growth stimulator that I want to talk about is something called cytokinins, okay? Um, and notice up here that the key concept here is that we're trying to get plants to grow. And if you're trying to get a plant to grow, you need to generate more cells. And in this class, we realize that that requires the process of mitosis. Um, now, cytokinins are definitely a naturally occurring thing in the plant, and they will promote cell division, i.e., mitosis. <clears throat> they will also produce organ development, okay, and they will especially grow lateral buds. So that would be an example of some of the branches going off laterally, horizontally on the plant, um, as well as stems, which will grow vertically. Um, they are found in very active areas, like we, like we saw before, the apical areas, which would be the top of the stems and then the tip of the roots. Um, but a major thing is they can also assist with chloroplast development, which chloroplasts are the major functioning parts of a plant for photosynthesis. So um, cytokinins, very, very important pro, or, um, growth regulator and will help stimulate growth as well. So those are all three, our auxins, our giblarins, and our cytokinins. All right, now we're into the inhibitors. And I'm only going to go through two. Um, first one is abscisic acid. Um, and that is a growth inhibitor. So what's going to happen when this plant is exposed to this acid? Well, number one, um, it is synthesized or made in response to dry conditions. So what that tells you is that this can actually naturally incur in plants. Now, wait a minute. Why would you want a plant to have something that naturally occurs it naturally occurs and stops it from growing. Well, if we're in dry conditions, we don't want to lose water. One of the areas that plants utilize to exchange water is something called the stomata. 
which is basically an opening in the leaf. So this abscisic acid, although inhibits plant growth, can also be used as kind of a protective um, means to make sure that the plant does not lose water. Um, however, with that said, if you don't have water, you can't go through the process of photosynthesis. That's why this is considered a growth inhibitor. It'll also prevent embryos from germinating. Um, and at the seed level, it can keep seeds in a dormant stage for a long time. So um, it's kind of one of those PGRs that can be good in certain situations, but if you are in a healthy, um, normal, watered sunlight area, um, you spray a plant with this, it's definitely going to affect its growth rate. But in a desert, in a dry condition, um, it'll definitely help the plant survive. All right, hope you're still awake. We got one slide left here. Um, our final growth inhibitor that we're going to talk about is something called ethylene. It's actually a simple gas, C2H4, um, and it promotes the aging of tissues, okay? So think of it as if you're 18 years old and I spray ethylene on you, you would look like you're 50. Wrinkly, old, dusty, that's, that's the goal. Now, why would we want to use something like this? Well, it opposes many of the effects of auxins and cytokinins. Um, this is a common chemical used to ripen fruits like apples. Now, I have a little image over here, and what I really want to focus on is something called positive feedbacks in this loop, which basically says that, let's say all of these green apples here are not quite ripe. They're very tart, very sour. You spray some ethylene, here's C2H4, onto one apple, it'll ripen, okay, because it causes it to age and starts, and that's part of the process for fruits is we like to let them sit out and let them age. Once that one ripens, it secretes more ethylene and it just slowly spreads. So if you ripen this apple, eventually all of these apples on the tree will ripen, okay? So a lot of the apple orchards in this area will utilize this once they start getting to that point where apples are starting to ripen. That way they can ripen all of them at the same time. They can control the age of the fruit. They can pick it and sell it. Um, so this is actually kind of a sneaky way um, to ensure that your fruit is very ripe and that all of it is ripe at the same time. But the key thing is this amplification. It's all happening at once. It's a positive loop. So Basically, these PGRs can be used in, in ways to help the plant grow, to stop the plant from growing, or maybe to age the tissues and promote something like apple you know, ripening. Um, the bottom line here is that these can be produced naturally inside the plant, or they can be used unnaturally, um, which ethylene would be an example of something that we would unnaturally use um, to affect the plant. So I hope you hit on all these learning targets. If you have questions, please let us know. That's all I got. Yago, out.